Okay, guys. Um, good afternoon and welcome to Facebook Live Maths Lesson 3. Thank you for joining me. And um, it's three o'clock now and we're going to start straight away. Today we are going to be talking about uh, fractions, decimals and percentages. However, um, we need to recall what we did last lesson and um, you know, just to try and remember certain things that we have done. So um, last lesson, what we did was about powers and it will be good to see if we can try and remember how we solve this sort of questions that I have put up now. Um, your child um, that is with you in primary school or in secondary school can sit with you while they have their pen and paper ready or pen and book ready doing this, um, um, this question. So um, the questions A to E will be for um, secondary school students. Um, apart from D, we should be reasonable uh, solvable by primary five or what we call year five or year six, is, uh, year six students. So let's get on with it. So last lesson, we did talk about um, fractional um, indices or fractional exponents. So for A, we have eight one third, see, eight, not eight one third, eight to the, um, exponent one over three. It's not the same thing as eight whole number one over three. They're different, okay? So for this one, if you remember what we've done, we did talk about cube root last time. So this basically is asking you what three same numbers can you multiply to get eight? So that's what um, that cube root is saying. And obviously that's gonna be two. So if you got that bit right, well done. The next bit is, um, the B one, which is technically the same as the first one we've done, 27 uh, raised to that um, exponent will give you the cube root of 27, which is the same thing as three same numbers you can multiply to get 27. Of course, that will be three. So the cube root of 27 is three. And then the next one we have is 16 to the power half. Like I said, we shouldn't be saying to the power half, but since we understand the concept, uh, we stick to that because that's what most of us are used to. Uh, so that is telling us the square root of 16. So when we say the square root of 16, it means what two same numbers can we multiply to get 16? So that will be four. So here we would have um, our answers here to be written as four, our answers here to be written as three, our answers here to be written as two. And the reason why these answers are that is what I have just put forward. And then for this one, we have four cubed, which is technically saying um, repeated multiplication. So where you do, let's write that here, where you do, um, let's write it here, four, four cubed, would mean repeated multiplication, which is four times four times four. Now that will give you 64 when you multiply that true. So I'm gonna write 64 there. And obviously we also talked about the negative indices or negative exponents last time. So we know this has to do with reciprocal. This is the same thing as saying, one over four cubed. Remember, reciprocal is one divided by the number you were given. So one over four cubed is the same thing as four to the power negative, uh, to the exponent negative three. But like I said, we're used to saying four to uh, four raised to the power uh, and negative three. Well, that's fine if that's the, what we're used to. We just have to keep it that way for um, the fact that the concept is understood. So we have the answer as, um, one over 64. This is what four to the power negative three would give you. It's just the reciprocal of your positive 
index three. Okay, so what can be multiplied by three over 10 to get one? This is talking about the last two lessons we've done. Um, remember, we said we were going to have four math lessons live streamed on Facebook. So this is the third of the lesson. And uh, the last, the very first live stream we've done, we talked about reciprocals. So whatever you can multiply by three over 10 would be a reciprocal by of three over 10 to get one. So the answer here will be 10 over three. And you can check if that's correct. Let's write that 10 properly. You can check if that's correct. So you can say because um, three over 10 times 10 over three will give you one. So this, if you multiply that, will give you one. So the answer here will be 10 over three, which is basically the reciprocal of three over 10. So that's all about last week lesson, also part of last two weeks lesson. So I hope we all remember that. So that's great if we do. And if we don't, I hope this has been able to help to make you remember um, the last two lessons and the last lesson we've done. So today we're going to be talking about um, fractions, decimals, and percentages, and it will make sense to, if I take this out of the way, so it will make sense to talk about some math language or keywords um, as it relates to this topic. So if I go up, so today we will be uh, talking about fractions, we will also be talking about the denominator, the numerator, which is part of fractions. So I'm going to put these two on the fractions, okay? So this is fraction. A fraction would have a numerator and a denominator. And then obviously, powers of 10. Uh, we did talk briefly about this last time, last week. So the first power of 10, for example, will be 10 which is 10 to the power one. The second power of 10 will be 100, and the third power of 10 will be 1,000, and so on. So these are all powers of 10. Then multiples of 10. We have 10 times one, which is basically the 10 times table, 10 times 220, 10 times 330, and so on. So these 10, 20, and 30 are all multiples. Why powers are these ones here? So we must know that uh, very important. Now, this decimal here, decimals will always have a point. So any number with a point, a number with a point, with a point is a decimal number, okay? So that's why they always say decimals always have a point. So the decimal point and all that. So we're gonna start with what we have on the screen. It says, write a quarter as a percentage. Now from primary school, you're told to kind of know it by heart, what a quarter is as a percentage. So they draw diagrams to aid understanding for uh, primary school students. So I am going to show us how we should do this in two ways. Uh, for those of us who want our children to be competent with division, so that's what I've written here. This is a good way to show your child how to divide uh, using long division. So you have your division bar there and they must understand that one divided by four is not the same thing as four divided by one. So this one here is four divided by one, which is same as four. And this one here is one divided by four. So this is for long division. So we say how many uh, lots of four in one? That's not possible. So we put a zero and a point there and another zero there. Now, this is because we have to stick to the rules of the long division. And then we have how many lots of four in uh, 10, which is two, okay? Now, two lots of four is eight. You would have two more left to get to, um, you have two more left to get to 10. So you then go how many lots of four in two? That's not possible, you put zero there, but this time you don't put any point anymore. So how many lots of four in 20 becomes five. Now, this is the decimal equivalent for one over four if you want your child to do that before we then change it into a percentage. Now, I've written here to change a fraction to decimal, make sure the denominator is in a power of 10. And the reason we, I've said that will come uh, into perspective later. So once your child knows how to change using long division, 
your child needs to know that to change anything to a percentage, they just need to multiply by 100. Now, if I want to multiply 0 0.25 by 100, that would give me 25. And I'll put the percentage at the back because I've just multiplied by 100. However, for those who are very good with their divisions without having to go through this decimal, they can then just multiply 1 over 4 by 100 over 1. And that's how to change anything into a percentage. Now they can now multiply the top, which is 100 times 100, and multiply the bottom, 4 times 1, which is 4, or what we call the denominator. Now this, as a percentage, is correct. But some children struggle with changing that top-heavy fraction into um, um, into a mixed number or trying to divide. So they could learn this first and change it into percentage, or they could just multiply anything they have by 100 to change to a percentage and put a percent sign by the end there. So we can now divide this. We say, how many lots of four in 10? It's two lots of four in 10, which is eight, because two lots of four will give you eight. You need two more to get to 10. That's two more. You put it with this zero because you've been, you've done you've done with the 10. Then you say how many lots of four in 20, which is five. And then they put the percentage there. Now for those of you who's, who have children who are conversant with long division and they can divide something like this, fair enough. They can also learn the second method, which I'm gonna show us now. So one over four into a percentage basically means how many lots will I have out of 100? Okay, so if your child is not very good with long division, there is no problem. Just tell them how can they find out how many lots of four um, in hundreds. So they say to you, uh, there are 25 lots of four in hundred. And then you tell them, okay, four times 25 is 100. Whatever you've done to the denominator, you've got to do it to the top. And so they now have it as one times 25, which is 25. And so anything out of 100 becomes 25% for them for a quarter. So B, we've already done it because it says write a quarter as a decimal. You can use your long division to get it as 0.25. Yeah, you can use that. Or you can tell your child to convert uh, the bottom number, which is four into 100 and um, Whatever they've done to the bottom, they have to do to the top to get the top. So, but it will be it will be clearer as we go on. So we need to take note of this sentence to change anything to a percentage, just multiply by hundred. Uh, if you want to change my very self into a percentage, just multiply me by hundred, then I'll become a percentage. Uh, to change a fraction to decimal, make sure the denominator is in a power of ten. So we've talked about powers here. So I have used 100 here because 100 was simpler to work with, but otherwise any power of 10, once they can put it there, they will be able to find out what the decimal equivalent is. Let's carry on. Um, write these values in order of size, starting with the smallest first. So before you can write these values in order of size, they have to to all be in the same uh, kind of maybe decimal form or in the same kind of fractions or in the same type of percentage to make it easier when they are showing their workings out. Fair enough, some children can tell you straight away what the answer is, but if they don't know how to show it on paper, they will lose marks when it comes to exams. So seven over 10, that's already a fraction. How about if I wanna try and change this into a fraction so that I can then compare which one is bigger? Now you need to tell your child, or if your child is watching me, when you have two decimal places like this, you have to make your bottom number or your denominator two zeros, which is 100. So if I have three numbers, maybe it's two that is going to be uh, three decimal places, then it will be three zeros at the bottom. So right now I've got two zeros for two decimal places. And then the first significant figure here is seven. And I put that seven there. So I have converted... Um, 0 0.07 into a fraction and I have I have left the 7 over 10 as it is here. Now before I can compare these fractions I have to make sure the denominators both of them are in the same equivalence which is 100 100 or 10 10. So to make this 100 I'm going to multiply by 10 
which is basically adding one zero. And I'm gonna multiply this by 10, which is basically adding one zero because seven times 10 is 70. 70. So now that they are both having the same denominator, I can tell which one is bigger using the numerator um, on top here. So the highest number here we have here is 70 and the smallest is seven. So obviously the smallest here will be the seven, which is for this. So this will be the smallest and this will be uh, the larger of the two. Okay, so I am going to then move on to these exam questions, which are something we need to use to practice. So we have 13 over 20 to a decimal. We're going to use uh, both methods that I have just talked about. So 13 over 20, to change this into a power of 10, I could divide this by two, can't I? And I divide this by two, can't I? Because whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do to, to the top. So this becomes 6.5 or six and a half over 10. Yeah. Or for people who are not very used to that method, you could tell them to just change the 20 into another power of 10, like 100, if that's simpler for them to work with. Okay. So this is times five. And then they times that by five. This becomes 65 over 100. Now they can now tell because it's two zeros, they need two decimal places, which is 0 0.65. And then they've converted that into a decimal. But then if they get here and they're stuck when they're dividing by 10, which has one zero, they, just, they tell you in schools that decimal points don't move. But for the purpose of this lesson, we're just gonna use the simpler way, which is since we have one zero and we're dividing, we're just gonna move that once to the left side and our answer will be 0 0.65. And that's what you get. Now for the long division, if you want your child to learn the long division, I'm going to put that here. So we have 13 divided by 20. How many lots of 20 in 13? That's not possible. So you put a zero and a dot and a zero there. And then how many lots of 20 in 130? There are six lots of 20, which is 120. And then you will have 10 more left, won't you? So how many lots of 20 in 10? That's not possible. You put zero, or you don't put any point anymore. So how many lots of 20 in 100? That will be five, okay? So you can basically use the long division or you use the short method. The other one says convert 17 over 40 as a percentage to a percentage. Remember, whatever you wanna do to a percentage, just multiply it by 100 over one. Now, not every child will be able to work with big numbers, but let's try and do this first. So this becomes 1700 over 40%, but they can't leave their answer like that. They've got to simplify it. Now, if they are struggling with big numbers, you don't need to worry because you can actually tell them that they can simplify that 40. So let's do that as well. 17 over 40. How about trying to divide this by four to get 10? If you want, you could do that, um, but they have to divide the top as well, okay? Now, how many lots of four in 17? There are four lots of four in 17, remainder one, which is a quarter, and that will be 4.25 over 40 divided by four is 10. So now your child is possibly thinking, oh, they need to change the bottoms to 100, which is true. So you then have your 4.25 over 10 times 10, which is like saying, okay, I need to change this to a percentage. So the bottom has to be 100. So you times it all by 10 as well, okay? So what you should now have, remember, when your child is multiplying, you should have something like 42.5 over 100, which is technically saying 42.5%. Now, this is for children who can do this bit of division. But if they get stuck here, you just need to tell them to find how many lots of 40 in 170 or you could just tell them to divide by 10 and divide this by 10 to get 170 over four. So they then, they possibly will then be able to work with the simpler version. So how many lots of four in 17 is four. You tell them to write the four, 16. They have one more left. They join it with a zero to become 10. How many lots of four in 10, which is eight. Um, how many lots of four in 10, which is two? 
and two lots of four will give you eight. So they need two more, which is remainder two, and they need to write it as um, um, that fraction. And 42, two over four is the same thing as 42.5%. Uh, so you tell them they need to simplify that to 42.5% as well. So I am going to discard these changes so that I can then um, write, okay, I can actually write on the other side. So if we have to convert five over eight to a decimal, we can use any of these methods. Like I said, you can see me um, using the long division and the short division. Anyone which is good for your child is all right. So five over eight, we can use the long division or we can multiply this by um, a number that can give us hundred if we know that number. But if we don't know it, you can just tell your child to use the long division. So let's start with the long division. So we have five divided by eight, yeah? How many lots of eight in five? That's not possible. So we put a zero and a dot and a zero. How many lots of eight in 50 is six, which is um, 48, remainder two. How many lots of eight in two? It's not possible, you put a zero, yeah? You don't put a point anymore. How many lots of eight in 20 is two, which is 16? So you need four more to get from 16 to 20. And so you say how many lots of 18 for is not possible. You put zero there. And how many lots of 18 40 is five. So if you have to change five over eight into a decimal using the long division, you should be having 0.625, all right? So, um, and of course, this is what I would advise parents to do with their children, teaching them long division, okay? Uh, for every 200 pounds that Mrs. Wallace earns, she saves 34 pounds. So basically saying to you um, a story really, and then now you've got to work out the maths, work out 34 pounds as a percentage of 200. I know 34 over 200 could actually be reduced to, um, if I have this, I'm going to get 100, won't I? They want me to change it into a percentage, don't they? So if I divide this by two, I'm gonna get 100. And if I divide this by two, I'm gonna get 17. So it's 17% because it's already out of 100. Anything out of 100 is a percentage. So that's technically worked out easily with that method. Or your child could just do 34 over 200 times 100 over one. Um, but I would advise uh, that you teach them that once the denominator is 100, they have got into their um, answer. Last month, Mrs. Wallace earns a thousand pounds. How much of this does she save? So these are things that you just help them to understand uh, what how it's all done, okay? So um, I've got six minutes left. I am going to just breeze over this one, which is quite important for me. Um, so if we look at this table, please, this table is showing us uh, the percentage. If we want to change this into a fraction, just tell your child, or if your child is watching me, 85% uh, means 85 over 100. Okay, and if you have to change that into a decimal, remember to tell them because it's already in a power of 10 at the bottom, they just need to, or at the denomin denominator, they just need to make sure that their answer has two decimal places, which is 0 0.85, just like the two zeros. And remember I said, in schools, we, you know, they're taught not to move the decimal point, but actually 85 over 100 has a full stop here. Just tell them this is like a full stop there, like the end of a full sentence. And um, uh, if they're dividing, they just need to move the point the number of zeros they have in the denominator. We know decimal points don't move, but for the sake of this lesson, let's move it, or for your child to really understand it in an easier way. I'm gonna move one and two places to my left because I'm dividing. This bar means divide, okay? So if I move one and two, the full stop or decimal place is no longer here. It's here now. So my answer will be not 0.85, okay? And then this one here, not 0.12 is, um, two decimal places. So if I want to write it as a fraction, I write the two significant figures we have there, and then we write it as the number of uh, 
the number of decimal places we have, we put the two zeros because there are two decimal places and then we put one with it. Now you can simplify this, you can simplify this if they've asked you to put your answer in the simplest form. And of course, it's gonna be 12%, won't it? Because it's already out of 100, yeah? And so the last one here, we have 23 over 25. You know that if you have to change something to a percentage, it has to be out of 100. So you can tell your child, what can they multiply by 25 to get 100? Or how many lots of 25 will give you 100? They tell you four lots, okay? So we have 100 at the bottom because four lots of 25 or 25 lots of four will give us 100. And 23 times four obviously will be uh, 92. All right, so it becomes 92% for the um, uh, percentage side. And of course, for the decimal pl place, it becomes 0.92 because it's two decimal places uh, for these two zeros there. And the last one, obviously, is, um, I'll skip this one and Let's do this. The table shows the percentage of votes each party obtains in an election. So they've written all these numbers here. Work out what, per what percentage voted for labor. Now remember percentage is out of 100. If we add whatever we've got here now, we've got 10 and 11, we carry one, three, six, eight, yeah? 81 so far. So we take that away from 100 because we want percentage to be, to give us a total of 100, okay? So um, I hope I'm right there. Five plus five is 10, 11, you carry one, two, plus three, five, plus two, 71. That's 71, guys. So if you take this away, you have your nine there because you cannot take one from nothing and you cannot borrow from nothing. So you come here, to borrow one from your neighbor. This person comes here to borrow one and this person becomes 10, okay? Now, this person here can now borrow from this 10. And so this becomes nine. Remember you already borrowed from here, which is zero. And the one you borrowed here. So 10 take away one is nine. Nine take away seven is 29. So the leftover will be 29%, okay? And if you try and add them all up, you would have your total of, um, as a check, let's check that of 100%. So nine at 514, at 519 plus one is 20. You put two there, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plus 100%, okay? So this will be your answer. Then this last question says, write 35% uh, percent as a fraction. So you write 35 over 100 as your fraction, but they want it in the simplest form, guys. So you know any number that ends in five or zero can be divided by five. So you divide both by five, okay? 35 divided by five is seven, 100 divided by five is 20. So this is what it is in the simplest form. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson so far. And I am very happy that you were able to stay on to watch me if you were. And we're gonna call it a day um, in the next one minute or so, but I think I've still got one more minute there about, and now we can just complete the lesson using this bit here. So this as a percentage has already been given to us as a fraction, so we just write 7% there. And your child could then check out on this one as well, which is 35, it's two decimal places or anything out of out, anything out of 100 is a percentage 35 over 100 and of course this one here they've given you the percentage you just need the decimal so what you can do is use the short method if you want which is five times what will give me 100 maybe 20 and then you put 100 there and because you've multiplied the bottom by 20 to get 100, you've got to multiply it all by 20 as well. So 20 times three becomes 60, yeah? So for you to change anything to a decimal, make sure your denominator is in a power of 10, okay? So now you can now write not 0.6 or you can write not 0.60, they are both the same thing, all right? So as a recap, as a recap on what we have just talked about today, we are going to see that we have um, 
done the bits and pieces on these keywords or maths language. And I want us just to recap that. So we've talked about multiples of 10, which is your 10 times table. Uh, we've talked about pass of 10, which is like 10 to the power one, 10 to the power two, 10 to the power three. So 10 to the power three will be a thousand. So we've also talked about fractions, which is having uh, a numerator and a denominator. So we've talked about decimal, uh, the decimals would always have a decimal point, a number with a decimal point is a decimal number. We've talked about percentage where we said anything out of 100 is a percentage. And if you are asked to change anything to a percentage, just multiply that stuff you're given by 100 over one. And we also talked about long division and short division. And we made sure we, um, said that you try and encourage your child to use long division wherever possible. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again next week.